Hi, uh, Dr. Ngro, SpinoFunctionalAnatomySeminar.com. I'm going to uh, review uh, the sleeper stretch with you um, and try to show you a, a more effective way to accomplish this stretch. Of course, the sleeper stretch is for stretching the posterior glenohumeral joint capsule. Uh, it's very common in, in people above the age of 40 to have posterior uh, glenohumeral joint fibrosis. Um, it's also common in uh, baseball pitchers. It's something you should be looking for uh, in any of your patients that have subacromial impingement. And one of the stretches that is given commonly for uh, uh, posterior humeral, glenohumeral humeral joint fibrosis is called the sleeper stretch. And the way that uh, you're instructed to do the sleeper stretch is to have the patient lie on their side with their arm bent uh, to 90 degrees or past. And then what you're instructed to do is tell the patient to use their other hand in order to push their arm down. Now, in a normal patient, they should be able to get all the way down to the ground. In most people that have tight posterior glenohumeral joint capsules, um, that doesn't happen. They have a restriction here. And uh, what I see a lot of people do is tell their patients just simply push and hold. And uh, by doing that, you're going to be stretching the posterior joint capsule. The problem with that is, is that because the rotator cuff muscles are also tightening up in this area, you don't really access the uh, posterior glenohumeral joint until you get past the neurological barrier that is the rotator cuff. Uh, and to prove that, what we do is if you get into this position and you find that the patient's restricted, if you have the person do some brief post-isometric relaxation techniques, so get them to try to externally rot rotate uh, against their own resistance and then relax and push, you'll go even farther, and relax and push, you'll go even farther, and relax and push, you'll go even further. So what you should do is tell the patient to do this PIR or post-isometric relaxation until such point that they get to a restrictive barrier where that technique no longer gets them any more internal rotation. At that point, when you pass the resistance of the muscle, that's how you know you're actually stretching the glenohumeral joint capsule, and therefore you're, you're effectively uh, treating the posterior glenohumeral joint fibrosis. Um, so at that point, I have the patients hold that stretch for you know, anywhere between two minutes uh, to, uh, you know, to 20 minutes, as long as they possibly can. The longer they hold, the better. Uh, the reason we do that is because um, through the recent research on fascia, we know that in order for there to be a sustained deformation of the tissue, we have to hold the stretches, especially of capsular tissue, a lot longer than we once thought. Um, so when you're giving somebody a sleeper stretch, uh, make sure that you get them to do the PIRs until they get past that muscular resistance, and in, in that, in that way you'll be actually stretching the capsule itself.